Hello and welcome to The Last Standy, a board game podcast coming to you from three exciting countries across Europe. I am joined here today by Alessio. Hello. Audrey. Hi, hi. As often, I'll be your host, Alexis. But this time, we have a fifth challenger, uh, Marcin from Poland, uh, the CEO and creative director of Into the Unknown, the studio behind Iron Trespass Odyssey. Thank you so much to be with us today, Marcin. Oh, uh, hey guys, and, and yeah, thank you for, for having me, like, it's always a pleasure. For the third time! <laughs> uh, third time, the, the charm, as we say. About my game, so it's, it's, it's a match made in heaven. <laughs> Before we start, uh, let me give a quick refresher to for the listener that might not be aware of your studio. So in 2019, you launched an extremely successful Kickstarter for Aeon Trespass Odyssey, reaching a bit over a million dollars in funding, uh, finally delivering the first half of the campaign last year to critical acclaim. Uh, I think this said to say that it's I think it's fair to say that um, ATO has been regarded as an absolute success in terms of its mechanics. Uh, it's gameplay, it's thematic, uh, it's basically been uh, panned by the entire uh, board game uh, milieu, so to speak. Uh, I think that you, you, you people are probably very happy with yourself. Should I answer? Yes, yes, we, 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 we are very happy. Uh, it was such an undertaking. Uh, it was such a challenge. Like when, when you look at it, uh, what we, what we uh, wanted to achieve, uh, it might have looked like like like, can they do it? Will be it will it be any good? Uh, and it was a very very busy uh, three years for us. Uh, even harder because of the pandemic. Um, again, I'm I'm glad that we were able to do it. That uh, it came out just uh, as I wanted it to to come, and that the reception is is is, is what it is. Like, um, well, it's it's always a challenge uh, to to. Stay true to yourself when you, whenever you are designing anything, and you are designing for money and not for because again this is also a product like we we don't, we're not doing it um, just for ourselves. We want to again sell it because that's how we we, we are supported. Um, so there's always this um, this question of uh, whether we should go with the trends or whether we should stay true to ourselves. Um, and I was in the business of, of, of games overall for, for several years uh, before even starting uh, Into the Unknown. And so with, with Into the Unknown, we, we just sat down and thought like, no, this is, this is the thing we want to do. This is what drives us. There's, there's nothing like this uh, out there. We, we, we don't want to take any, um, like any shortcuts. We, we, we won't compromise on, on, on many things. Um, and we stay true to that vision. So I'm, I'm really, really glad that, that it resonates with people. Well, from uh, every uh, critic out there, it seems like you, you managed to do it. So um, in uh, last year, so in 2022, you've launched a second Kickstarter for uh, Kingdoms Fall On, your second game. Uh, this one is due to deliver early 2024, I think was the initial estimation. Uh, I'm not sure if it's, all, uh, if it's still the, the goal. Waves, which were, uh, and the, the second wave will, will arrive later, but yes. That's that's wonderful. So this one was for another uh, million in in funding, uh, but today you are here to talk about your most recent project that just launched a few days ago, a reprint of a Trespass Odyssey, as well as a new standalone and retro compatible game called uh, Sons of Heracles. Well, uh, Iron Trespass Sons of Heracles, I think it's the the full title. T Twelve Sons of Heracles. <laughs> <laughs> because there's also Daughters of Heracles and like we. <laughs> <laughs> The characters, um, like the, there's a whole gamut of, of characters. Like Heracles, even in like this is something that is really fun because I, I saw someone asking on, on one of the forums, like, oh, Heracles was very promiscuous because he has so many children. And yeah, and this is something that we also found out very early in, in, in development, like years ago, because because uh, since of Heracles and um, a lot of the art you you, you are seeing has been uh, created like five years ago even. Uh, we, we already had this idea for, for, this, for this game too, mm. and we, uh, w once we, we started to uh, dig into the lore behind Heracles, etc., etc., so we could um, like incorporate as much as we can of, of, of mythology uh, into it. Uh, Heracles has much more children than, let's say, 16 that, that uh, 
that can be introduced to those seasons. Like he had over. <laughs> Uh, yeah. but, um, that is the good thing about doing something about Greek mythology, is that you're never going to be uh, running out of characters that you can uh, use or, or complicated family relation. Uh, you will <laughs> always have something. Yeah. Uh, so so be just before I finish, uh, at, the, at the moment of recording, uh, we are just passing $2 million. Uh, so it has already uh, surpassed both of your previous Kickstarter combines. Uh, safe to say you must be very happy with yourself. But my uh, most important question is, uh, I hope that you're not too exhausted with it. Uh, yeah, so I am exhausted, but not too exhausted. And that's a first for me. Like uh, um, we've, we've, we've started as, as a company of, of, of three people working, um, uh, like ha having day jobs and, and working uh, at Itum uh, after hours. And now there's uh, almost 20 people working in the office and um, that we, we hired over the course of the last uh, three years. We've got a lot of contractors too. And a lot of those people that started working with us like three years ago, two years ago, one year ago, um, like finally, because mm, like finally gained the experience uh, because it's it's very hard to 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 get into this kind of business. There's, there's not like a uh, school for uh, doing a, a game design or school for um, being a producer uh, that that deals with with this kind of thing. Um, so so now that we've got an experienced team and we uh, we've got a great pipeline um, and I can delegate a lot more tasks to to everyone. Uh, I am very proud to say that I'm not as exhausted as in the previous campaigns where I was like during the first campaign uh, in ATO and, and this is like, I'm not exaggerating. This is how it looked like. I woke up at around 7 a.m. and I, I, had, I had my uh, laptop um, by the bed. I opened it. It was, it was already running and I started to respond to comments and writing updates and I would sit there to around midnight or 1 a.m. Uh, in the night <laughs> to sleep like because there was no one like we did have, we don't we don't have a, a dedicated support person like every every almost every text besides those that uh, Conrad wrote uh, when I was at the hospital because <laughs> I landed in the hospital in the middle uh, of that campaign were, were written by me like every every comment every response to to a backer every update yeah so it was it was really like a, a marathon thing. Uh, it was, was better. Um, but we were also, uh, at, the, at the same time, like there were more people at the company, but uh, we were also doing um, like um, the final uh, edits on A on Threat Pathology at that time. So, so I had to also like, uh, like jump from, from the campaign to, to the, uh, like to putting the whole game together. So it was so exhausting. And again, now I'm, I'm, I'm still going, uh, <laughs> going to bed late. But I'm not as early in the office as I was uh, then. And again, a lot of the stuff I can delegate. So it's, it's, it's really awesome to, to have such a great team. Like this is something that uh, I don't know, like uh, people don't really appreciate uh, that. Nothing like Eon Trespass Odyssey uh, is made by a single person. Like uh, it's, a, it's a team effort. So um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You, the team at uh, Into the Unknown seems to have done a, a tremendous job with uh, this new Kickstarter. Um, while we're still talking about the previous project of uh, Into the Unknown and now the new one, uh, I think it's fair to raise a, a question from Fen. Uh, by the way, I, I, Fen was unfortunately uh, unable to join this time and uh, they apologize for, for not having been able to, to make it to you, um, but uh, giving you the, your best wishes with uh, the campaign. Um, yeah, so uh, Fen asked, uh, recently there's been a few companies that juggle uh, multiple Kickstarter at once, mm -hmm. and in some cases that has uh, resulted in some trouble, uh, troubling situation for backers <coughs> and games. also for <coughs> the companies because it's, it's a huge undertaking. Mm -hmm. um, Into the Unknown has been, uh, is currently uh, handling the last two cycles of ATO as well as Kingdom Fall Known, and now launching the Sons of Heracles, which seems to be a, a massive uh, uh, campaign, but thankfully that's uh, for the years to come. Uh, how are you handling this? And, and um, what are the foreseeing, uh, are you foreseeing any, any problem with that, uh, with that fact? 
Yeah, so, so uh, well, the, the short answer is uh, no, no. And that uh, um, the, the most I was worried about uh, our company was during the pandemic, but not because of, 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 uh, of any funding issues or something like that, but because nobody knew what would happen. Like we, during the pandemic, there was so many, like this, this was, we, we, we made several previous campaigns, but much smaller and uh, produced locally. And the pandemic really disrupted all logistical chains. So there were really problems with even with getting samples. Then there was the logistics crisis with the containers um, like arriving at, at ridiculous prices. Uh, there was a paper shortage in in, in Japan at one point uh, in Japan, Jesus, in China, <laughs> uh, at one point. Uh, there was um, also even an energy crisis uh, in China. Like we, and at one point we were talking with our factory, and they say that. Well, China is introducing um, electricity rationing, and the factory cannot uh, cannot work at full capacity, so there may be delays. Um, so yeah, so those those things um, those things uh, what like were really weighing on me in that sense. But uh, we also like we uh, let's say we are very fiscally conservative. Like we um, even though we made the, the million dollars uh, with uh, Eon Chess Odyssey, it's not like we all got exclusive like super super sports cars or or or, or go went vacationing or something like that we we tested those those uh, funds that we don't didn't need uh, at the moment and we were very cautious uh, with every expenditure um yeah we we, we had a small office then um so uh, like um even with uh even with everything going on um and even with 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 uh, those problems, uh, we were able to continue without uh, without a hitch. And uh, what also helped was to, which was like planned in the sense that uh, we raised the price of Eon Chespas Odyssey, as you know. Um, it launched at a very, very, very low price. Yeah. Price. It was, again, which was a, um, a tactic to get people interested in, in our company, to get interested in the game, because again, the pitch was very hard for the game. It's very hard to, to, to pitch for a big game that's got so many ideas in it. How, From how a brand new company, especially. But how do you describe the gameplay loop even? Like, what, in one, you, should, you should be able to do it in, in one sentence. And like, it's very hard in, with, in the case of uh, Ian Shepard's Odyssey. Uh, so we knew that we would be increasing the price. We didn't know if, um, what would, would be the final price in that sense that um, the rising costs of production uh, also contributed to the final price of the uh, of the game. But we, like we, we were honest, always honest with with uh, when the price was going to go up, uh, why it's going up, etc. Um, and so we, like after 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 the the pandemic um, subsided, we were left in a, in a pretty good position. We also um, created some uh, additional. Uh, Rewards for players who wanted to contribute to the shipping costs, and and that also worked out great with almost Odyssey and, and the Godforms. Uh, so at the end of the day, like we we did not lose anything on on on, on Ian Chespas, uh, Odyssey. We did not make much in that sense. Um, like the, the again, there's there there, there are no no not, not many profits um, that were not already invested. For example, in development of Kingdom Forlorn. Or uh, in development of tools in Heracles, but I, I know that a lot of companies have uh, Kickstarter companies have problems uh, like like you described because they are funding their previous campaigns with the money from the like from next campaign like um, uh, trying to outrun um, yeah. problems, and it was never uh, a case with us like uh, the, the the funds for uh, KF are kept separately on a separate bank account. Uh, they have not been touched for development of uh, Eon Trespass Odyssey or Twelve Sins of Heracles. It's actually the the other way around. Like uh, because I, I, I'm I'm talking I'm saying that we did not make much profit on Eon Trespass Odyssey as of yet. However, we paid for the development of KF and for Twelve Sins of Heracles from the funds we gained from uh, ATO. So in that sense, the game is. Even much more a success for us internally than than, than maybe anticipated. In that, it not only allowed us to continue um, with the studio to um, to publish the game, but to also fund those other projects. So, that, so 
That's Facebook. wonderful. Like we, if if there was any if, if there was any um, time that uh, there there could have been problems, it would have been during the pandemic, for example, if it was prolonged by another five years or something like that. Um, but then the whole world would have problems. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, I certainly uh, noticed the, the increase in, pre in price. I was not able to, to go for the, the first Kickstarter, uh, unfortunately, at the time. So this time I went for the, for the whole thing. Um, really excited to get my hands on, uh, on ATO. But the other members of the podcast have all been raving about how good it is. So uh, we can, uh, I can, I'm only looking forward to, to finally uh, get yeah. a copy next year. Yeah, uh, I, I had it for 129 euros. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah. That was, that was yeah. Even back then, I think it was uh, it was on the lower end of... of uh... <laughs> yeah. And yeah. Continuing, continuing from that, um, <laughs> how it's called in, in French, it's the Cavalry Financière, uh, Financial Cavalry, um, for the companies that do finance uh, Kickstarters based on uh, the other one, which you are trying to, to, to avoid, as you, as you said, and not doing uh, this. But um, we could notice from the start in the new uh, campaign that some of the stretch goals are actually um, enhancing, uh, increasing the content, adding to the cycles of four and five uh, boxes. Uh, and y initially there was a bit of, of confusion, but you cleared that uh, in the comments, that it applies both for backers from the previous Kickstarter, late backers from the previous Kickstarters, and people that will order um, the, the box during the current uh, Kickstarter. So ha what does these uh, additions mean uh, in terms of, let's say, potential delays for the new box? Have, have these additions actually been already thought because you were, uh, how to say that, confident that you would hit these goals and thus they have already been prepared? Um, anything else that you think could explain uh, how they integrate in the campaign? Sure thing. So, so the first thing is that we decided to, de because with a rep campaign, uh, and if you, uh, that, uh, that you want to get to the backers as quickly as possible, you shouldn't really modify the the original content, um, uh -huh. but that really influences the the production timeline. But we also wanted to to give something back to 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 the players who are going for the for for the for the reprint for the main box. And as the as the final uh, proof has not been yet accepted for uh, for the expansion, we said, we we thought like oh this is gonna be this is gonna be something fun uh, fun to do. Um, so yeah, so we, we, we decided to do some of those things. Some of those things were, were, were planned and some of those things uh, were definitely tested. Um, some of those things are in that sense more, even a bit more cosmetic or uh, really easily implementable. For example, like new Argonauts. This is something that people ask for um, and, and it's, it's, it's easily, well, it's, 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 it's a more easy, um, Let's go to to add to the box without uh, without disrupting the uh, the timeline. Mm -hmm. um, the, 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 there are several that are much much major, much more major, like like the old uh, old font battle. Um, but the, the the one that 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 like impacts the production in any sense uh, would be the uh, the Babylonian Madness, which is which is more an, an ad hoc uh, add-on because. Uh, it's well the the, the uh, philosophy our philosophy of, of, of Kickstarter is we we do plan the campaign like we we know what we want to uh, we that we, what we want to unlock we go over um, quotes from factories to see how much everything will cost so we can uh, add things that like don't make us go bankrupt for example like mm -hmm. um, but we also like leave leave like a five percent on top of it for for like creative madness uh, in that we believe that that uh, this is the spirit of of kickstarter like this is something that uh th there's like a safety margin that oh can we do it yeah yeah this is this is this is uh, this is super cool and th that was the thing with uh the babelian lunacy when we when we got the the miniature from uh, the we, we we've shown it in 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 uh the april uh, update for for ado 
and it, and it looks great. Um, but then then the like we, we had all the components out with the uh, with the uh, infinite staircase everything. And 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 someone put the Babylonian Luna C on top of a box that was on the uh, that was on the table. That's right. And, and we like, like looked at it and said, "Oh, wouldn't it be really cool that it was like super, super high? Like, like, like it really, really sold the uh, the idea of uh, of this of this tower monster." Um, and then we checked the the new VPs uh, for um, for Maduketos, um, and these are like uh, the best engineered ones. I've, like. When you when you get the game, when you get the expansions, and you see how the uh, VPs slot into the Meduketos, you'll be amazed at how it is divided. Like it's 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 it really goes a long way from from the simple uh, pegging system, uh, and and it so seamlessly integrates into those uh, those slots. And we thought like, oh, wouldn't it be fun to just do more stuff like this? Like what 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 could we do? Like we we've got the VPs, um, but what what uh, what what else could we do with with the miniatures that that make them um, more game like more integrated into gameplay? Because uh, like miniatures do sell games, um, but in, in some cases there is uh, like super close to the experience. Like they're, they're, you, you could you could really do without some of them, and we really do want them to be integral to the uh, to the game. Uh, so yeah, so we devised we, we had that mechanic uh, of, of the infinite staircase. Um, in the story, the Babylon Luna scene is building itself. Like it's 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 a palpable thing that you always see on the horizon. This tower that gets slightly bigger with each passing day you you traverse the, the Persian wasteland. Um, and you you even this is something. Oh, this is something that I'll spoil for uh, for. No, it's not a spoiler, but it's something that we never talked about. In that the Babylon Luna C miniature is also always present on the uh, voyage map, which is which is like it's it's always there uh, during uh, during the game during the whole campaign. Um, so so it was like cool. It, it, it's it's like this cool timer um, and and the, and the timeline for for uh, for the uh, Gardens of Infinite Grove uh, is um, endless in that sense. Yeah, the timer for cycle one is 80, cycle two is 80, cycle three is 90, and cycle four is infinite. Uh, which is, uh, which again, a, a, a fun, a fun, it's really, it really ties into the, into the story. It's not like, like, believe me, it's not for grinding reasons on, or anything like that. It just, it, it, it's really, really, really comes together with the teams of the, of the game and with, with what we're doing. And you'll have to see how it works. Uh, when the, when the game uh, gets into your hands, so yeah, so 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 to get back to your question, um, this is something that we've already um, like we we released that uh, update. This is something that we're already talking with the uh, factory, and we're getting estimates uh, for the um, for the rework of this uh, this one mold, and we should have like in in in, in two three weeks we should have an answer uh, for that. Mm. There's also a question of um, of the binder. Uh, I think, and uh, of the last um, Giginis, which both are not uh, like one of them is a um, is an add-on that you can use with both uh, Sins of Heracles and Odyssey, and we would really want this to go out with the expansions so as soon as possible. Uh, uh, yes, I, I have to say when I when I saw the binder, I was like, oh, this this is, this is great, this is amazing, and then. But if it delivers with Sons of Heracles, how am I going to use it with my cycles four and five? And, 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 and is it even free? Ah! Yeah. So, so, so no, no, no. So, so please be assured. Um, it will, um, it will uh, deliver with the reprint of ATO um, at the latest. In that sense, that we would even want it to be available earlier. Like we will do everything in our power to to get it even earlier to you. That's awesome. You're doing your best to merge uh, pledges when applicable. Yeah. So yeah, and, and then of course this is some. This is another question that was posted somewhere. Is that can we then like merge the pledges, etc.? Yes. We. It's 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 not something that, will, that can be done automatically uh, in any of the systems. But we can, of course, and we have been doing it for uh, for ATO already. Like if someone 
for example, there were like someone ordered uh, like someone ordered a game, then they thought that they don't want it, and they sold their pledge, and they uh, then ordered some other stuff as their separate account. Uh, it, it, m most of those pledge managers don't allow to merge them inside the pledge manager, but of course for shipping we can do it manually. Like it's we for for shipping we deliver Excel sheets to, with with shipping information to our um, logistical hub to our uh, logistical partners. So if if we if we sit down and we correlate those like two lists, we can we can find find out who uh, like oh this is the same person. We can ask them if they want to have those orders combined, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So yeah, so that 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 won't be a problem. We've we've, we've dealt with it before, and again now we've also got the uh, today. We, even we have some because we are we are also extending the team uh, at, at the same time as we are running the campaign. So uh, just uh, as, as we will finish this 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 uh, podcast, I'll be going uh, to interview some people uh, for first of all. Um, positions uh, and we are also expanding our um, logistical uh, part of the team uh, just to have that that part of the process also streamlined although i think our our um, all things all things said our delivery i think was really great like we this was our first delivery of a giant uh, giant project pro project product and and we've uh, we've delivered all the games with, within two months like we started uh, in, in 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 like in the middle of November, and most games were were um, delivered or uh, on their way before the end of December, and they would be even delivered. They would be delivered even quicker if it wasn't the busiest season for packages uh, with Christmas. So, uh, yeah, that's wonderful. Yeah, yeah. So again, um. So uh, I'll just skip the comment that the Babelian Lunacy on the Voyage face uh, being there like a looming uh, tower with the moon, etc. Et it sends out a big Majora's Mask uh, vibe. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in a sense, like uh, the, the the previous version of, of the Babelian Lunacy, the one with the... With the uh, face. The moon, <laughs> yeah, that, that one was even more Majora's, Majora's Mask. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and yeah, and you, and you should, you should. I don't know if you, Alessia, if you read my my essay or my my biography of Babylon Madness, which I wrote for uh, Ion Chespa. Uh, yeah. It, it, one of the updates. Yeah, it was. Th th this was the hardest, I think, concept uh, to do because, of course, um, it's a tower, and you want to make it exciting as a as an enemy. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> just mass. There was a part of like Sauron's tower. Uh, there was the idea of the Panopticon, um, which is also present in the in the fourth cycle. Uh, but yeah, but we over the years we couldn't find like the right the right way to to show it, and I think we now we have, and it also translates to the AI and BP cards, which are like uh, once you once you once you see them, once you read them, and if you know anything about um, architecture of, of, of towers or skyscrapers, etc. You, you'll 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 find a lot of like fun fun stuff, and you, you'll you'll get more out of it because again, we try to be faithful to how you would construct a tower. Okay. We... Yeah. Yeah, we already fought an Acropolis, so that's just one building. How hard could it be? <laughs> yeah, it's like for. Uh... <laughs> I'm sorry. No, it was just uh, it's a building. How can it be? Uh. Uh, it's one, just one. <laughs> yeah. So, so this is the like I years ago. One of of the team asked me once. I I was I was pitching the uh, the sins of Heracles to, to them, and uh, they asked me like, uh, okay, Martin, it's really fine. Like you you'll be doing the 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 lion eater the the, the borer even, but uh, how how are you going to even do the Augean stables? Like what? <laughs> how how can you monsterify this this thing? And I and I just said like hold, hold my beer. <laughs> 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 he, uh, once you see the the stables, we 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 uh, yeah like we we sneak peeked it uh, a couple of years ago. Like I mean, two or three years ago, we already had the the concept for that. Okay, we, so something. 
No, yeah. I, I mean something is, is definitely going to throw some feces at us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like again, I, I don't want to spoil uh, the reveal of. Uh, it. I mean, we, we, when the podcast comes out, it will be a little bit of time ahead in the campaign, so you have oh. time to reveal what you tell yep. to us today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not wanting to force you, but. Yeah. So, uh, so the. The uh, the stables are like a living city. Um, well, that, that, uh, the, which which was um, buried at the at the bottom of the sea, and now it's emerging. And it does what it says in that sense that it's a stable, but for giant things. And it's got like these many. Mm, horse-shaped appendages. They are not. They are mechanical, but again, they are very stylized in in, uh, in the Greek uh, style. And this is a creature that um, can um, we call it can stable your titans in that sense that it can take over those titans because those 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 appendages have like this kind of almost triskelion helm looking thing at the end. Uh, and then and they can take control over your 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 titans and turn them against you yeah uh, of, yeah of, so, of course the stables were submerged of course <laughs> yeah. yeah well Heracles had to had to clean it somehow right yeah exactly uh, uh maybe it's the right time to give some context uh, so 12 saints of Heracles uh, is uh, set uh, in a setting where uh, for some reasons ITU hates uh, Heracles and Spartans and stuff because <laughs> because that's the case Heracles is uh, as a as a fact is as a fun fact Heracles is the protector of Sparta was the god the, the demigod protector of Sparta so <laughs> that's it that that makes strike to Marcin yeah <laughs> uh, and uh, basically, the uh, the context is that the sons of Heracles uh, can, uh, I, I guess, because I'm guessing, but I, I'll just throw the stone and then you'll talk about it and I'll let you talk because you probably revealed something at the end. <laughs> so, uh, Heracles, uh, in the original myth, he, he did the 12 labors to uh, actually as a, a, a tournament for his own sins which was, I think, killing the wife in that case. And uh, the children? Yeah, wife and children for that thing of the... Uh, I, I always uh, uh, mix that part of the myth with Jason and Heracles, so it was him who killed uh, Possessed by Madness for the blood uh, of the centaur or something. Uh, yeah, the, if yeah. I remember, yeah, it's, during, it's due, due to having a tunic that was filled with scratchy things that made him crazy. Yeah, with Venom on, of the centaur he previously yeah. killed. Yeah. It's very easy, Alessio. Jason is the one with the hockey mask. Uh, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, there's, a lot, there's a lot of mix. Uh, it's... Uh, the, the, that's another Jason. Uh, anyway, it's JavaScript object notation too. So uh, actually, uh, the fact is, uh, in this revised version of the myth, uh, actually the, the the sons and daughters of Heracles are trying to make Heracles, for some reason, atone for his sins. Uh, which are very different because uh, Heracles uh, kill, kill destroy the world so we will probably uncover this with the story but uh, every region of the 12 parts the world is split in are uh, dedicated to one of his labors so Eugen Stables was one of these he flooded them <laughs> so to clean them it was one of his labors so that's basically the context of the entire myth. Am I correct in this, Martin? Uh, yes and no. In the sense that, uh, yes, on the outset, but we, uh, as, as you may have noticed, we, we love to play with the myths um, and, and, and slightly twist them or try to add a different meaning to them. Yeah. So, so it's no, no different with, uh, with the 12 Things of Heracles. Um, the one thing is that um, 
not like the, the Heraclides have the, the children of Heraclides have many uh, motives to, to find their father and um, atoning for his sins would be like the best outcome like for like if everyone is, is, is super good uh, that would be the that would be the case but um, the children of Heraclides are also scorned by him like he was this absent father he um, he abandoned them um, or he, he like he was not a good father to anyone uh, basically how could he be um, Ooh, so, that, that yeah. the issues yeah <laughs> yeah so a lot of a lot of Heraclides are actually looking for more like a revenge or justice rather than than atonement for his sins um, and you, you'll, you'll be able to play with that in those regions because you can you can either uh, like you can either concent concentrate on your own uh, gains or you can try to help uh, like people you meet which will actually um, move you away, away from the goal um, that, that that is uh, finding Heracles. Um, and the fun thing is that uh, with with the, the sins or labors uh, happened uh, some time ago uh, pre Eschaton. Eschaton is the our our apocalypse uh, that we introduced to the ancient world. Uh, so there's a lot of misinformation even about what really happened. Um, and the regions are not um, like there's a there's a established chronology to how the Heraclesis labors uh, went like which one was the first which one was the, the last etc etc and you won't be um, well you may because you can go into the like into the open world and just follow the same the same structure but if you follow the structure of the seasons, you won't be going in, um, through them in a, in a chronological order. So you'll be you, you'll be learn you'll be trying to piece together the story of of, of what happened, um, what happened to Heracles. Is he alive? Is he dead? Will you fight him uh, throughout the story? And the final thing I can I can um, share on that is that. Not every region is based on a labor or one of those original 12. Uh, <laughs> for example, uh, the stables are an adversary, not a legion monster. Oh, uh, so yeah. li a living, uh, living city that is also uh, something that will fight. That seems very interesting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so again, it's some because of, uh, and this is something that uh, I think is 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 is. Uh, it's necessary in this in this type of thing. We really didn't want to have a uh, like a checklist of like we didn't want players uh, who experience the story and the gameplay to feel like they're oh this is this is so so routine now like oh there's 12, 12 of those sins we're going from sin to sin and like making everything everything right again or something like that. So there are the, like the, the further you go uh, because as plans go, rarely does the plan survive contact with reality so Heraclides may start the story wanting to to do what they want to do and then other stuff gets in the way and it's so well, it's not so it's not as clean as oh there's 12 regions so they're they are all tied to 12 uh 12 labors and that's that's it that's it speaking of these 12 regions uh, i read that they are explorable quite freely and together somehow uh, uh, what's going to be the footprint of that on the, on the table because i mean if i have to put 12 regions because i can move uh my um heraclides freely uh, between these 12 regions it's going to be a mess of a space <laughs> yeah is it going to be worse than delphi uh, <laughs> no in that um you when you travel around the region and um because we, we, we wanted to create an open world, but uh, an open world that's believable. So, uh, first of all, um, the um, each map has like uh, fringe regions that allow you to travel somewhere. And from there, you, you have fixed destinations that like you cannot skip uh, from from one end of the world to the other. Like if there's an island between those two places, you, you need to go through that island to, to reach that far, far away place. Uh, this is, later, this is remedied by the our our fast travel system of the knots of the world. Like once you get there, you can unlock a, a fast travel point and just 
uh, just travel through through like the well, it's a spoiler, but travel from place to place <laughs> uh, to those not um, of the world and um, like because because of this kind of setup, um, it's not like you'll be doing oh I'm um, now I'm like in Delphi for example like I'm I'm now in this region and then I'm in the other region and then I'm again back in that region. Um, we want play once you travel to another region. We want you to spend some time in that region. Um, so you you mo most of the time you'll have um, only one map before you. Like it's you you're in this region in Nemea. You're traveling around Nemea. Then you want to go to somewhere else like Anatolia. You arrive at the port. You you and you go on a ship. Um, there's the, like a fun um, liminal experience between them like we want to we want you to really feel that you're you're travel it's not like oh i'm on the, on the port space so i move to the left or to the right and i'm on the other map it's not, it's not like that um, because those regions are still separated by long stretches of land sea etc um so there will be a liminal experience between them so when you embark on a ship you'll have like you'll have an experience on the ship it's, it's not something like it's not a it's not a mini campaign itself or anything like that but you, you, you'll 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 feel that you are traveling, uh, and then you arrive at a, at, at your destination, um, and and so on. Then you can continue your adventure on on that map, and you and you pack this map uh, that you just left into the uh, new and improved insert. Oh, <laughs> uh, th oh? Uh, th yeah, well, that's a. That's actually a question that I, I wanted to ask to go a little bit more into details about all of that. Um, Heracles and Odyssey are going to have quite a different structure in the way that uh, that they are agents. Um, in Heracles, I think that from what you, you, you've you said, there's only four um, uh, monsters that we will fight. A four? Um, so it's actually, it's actually more than in ATO. Because, oh, right. because in ATO uh, the core game you've got uh, you've got eleven, which is three monsters per cycle plus two uh, adversaries, and now you have uh, three monsters per season plus one adversary per season. So that would like three seasons, for example, would be more like even even three seasons would be more than than the uh, than the core game. And we we are also introducing and and we've introduced one for. Um, for uh, summer, I hope we can introduce more. We're introducing the Nemesis uh, battles, which is like, yes. which is like a different type of, of adversary, which is which is really fun to do. So uh, at, at this point, it's uh, it's five uh, primordials in uh, uh, summer, and I hope that we can we can we can uh, get uh, another one into autumn uh, really soon. And it looks like it will happen. Um, I'm afraid you're going to have to also become a shelves maker and shel sell the appropriate shelves. <laughs> and then we fight the shelves. That's it. Monsterize the uh, shelf. Uh, we, 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 we joked about it uh, today in the office. Like, should we should we make it become a, sh uh, a furniture company? <laughs> well, you, you could Into do a partnership. Into the IKEA. Agent. Yeah. Um, but my question was. Um, uh, Heracles has also quite a different uh, game. Well, not a different gameplay, but a different gameplay loop, maybe from uh, from Odyssey because of the this more sort of uh, open world kind of uh, idea that you're going for. Um, but you are planning to make the game also uh, completely compatible in in terms of uh, primordials. Mm -hmm. um, could you maybe expand a little? Uh, not actually, not expand, just. Um, Explain in a few words, like what's the main difference between Heracles and Odyssey, and how exactly are they going to be compatible? Yeah, let's talk also about the incursions that, since we are there. Yeah, but, but uh, no problem. So um, they are very different in the in the campaign structure, as you've as you've uh, noticed. Uh, one is like a linear progression of of self-contained cycles with uh, legacy elements, like you take some stuff from the previous. Campaign and, and move into the the next. While in Sins of Heracles you are moving through the open world and uh, in a non-linear fashion, and this this means many things. Like it means that you can of course like 
go uh, to those regions in any order. Um, but you can also like return to a region, for example, like you can you can you can go back um, if if you want to to gain more resources, to gain more gear uh, if you want to. Um, so th this this actually is, is one of the major changes in that, and it really allows you to open your builds much more because you can oh oh I, I'll I'll go to this region. I know that this region is much more dangerous, but I know that if we can even if, if you can scratch this monster and, and get some resources out of it, um, then we can create this kind of item that we heard about. And this kind of item really, really, really works well on these other monsters that we are having problems with in this previous cycle. So, so let's just like go go for a second there, like make a make a short uh, detour to, to this region just to get that and and get back to the. Um, to the previous region, and this also ties with the uh, with how character progression works and how titans works uh, work. Like there's uh, there's, there's <laughs> so much that that's different between. The... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, that's clear. That's also pretty interesting. Yes, thank yeah. you. In, in, in ATO, you play um, Argonauts, who are um, these these mysterious characters that are awake and they don't remember who they are. And they regain their memories over time, and this is how you progress through your uh, like experience. But um, in in Sins of Heracles, you you get named characters. These are like this, this specific child of Heracles. Uh, they have their own story, which is uh, which is like a different. That's why we need um, four story books for for each. Um, for each season and not three. Like the, the 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 fourth one is for for the region, for the adversary, and for the um, characters. So it's easier for you to, as a player, you need you don't need to go over those all all those other books if you want to just read through your own character, because of course you can mix and match those at the start. So the progress, the abilities that you gain work differently. There's there's more of them. There's more types of them, and you can create builds with them. Like you can, it's 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 not permanent. So if if you can you can you can like uh, change those abilities to suit the battle that you are uh, going to uh, to do. Um, you the, the the ending of those stories is also different. And without going into spoilers, uh, you can continue. Like you can you can really continue with the character that even even if your story is done. Um, your character has, has, has like finalized their own personal storyline. You can you can you can freely continue with that character to the rest of the game. If you want. Like, like in Kingdoms Forlorn, for instance. Yes, although it, it it does have a it does have a certain spin to it, which I don't want to reveal. It's, it's uh, because of course, like in in uh, if you played uh, our game, you know that uh, we always try to give something like give a positive and give a negative. Like you always have to. Uh, take the good with the bad. Like there's always things you need to consider. Uh, so w with that, it's no exception. Like you, you can play the same character, um, but but you need to be wary of, of of certain things then, which which also adds. I think it adds uh, a quite different dynamic to the game. Um, and it's not and it's not anything like um, Argonal Catharsis. That I'll say. So. Uh, and yeah. Okay, uh, I can I, I can go on. Uh, this is um, the, the the crafting system is completely different. Mm -hmm. You you make the gear um, after the battle from 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 the monster the monsters themselves. The the economy of the monsters is is changed completely because in ATO you get uh, most of the time you get three resources per uh, per primordial. Here it's more varied. Um, and you'll get more gear to influence this outcome, and you'll go on those carcass delves, which are um, trips into the monster to find the best best parts that you need for the weapons, uh, which is also like a great, great, great fun, fun, fun mini activity. You'll have, and now we've unlocked the delve adventures, which is adventures in the belly of the beast, which is also really cool. Um, you don't have we don't have a technology uh, tree, but you get allies. Which uh, serve a lot of uh, functions in the game, like they support you in battle. They they can have their own crafting items, 
um, they can have voyage abilities. Um, they now have also, thanks to the generous backing, they, they have their own storylines and their own catharsis. So, so it, 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 you, you'll, you'll have like different dilemmas in that, uh, oh, this guy is, or this guy, girl, is they, they, they're really helpful to us. Uh, but the, but 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 you're feeling that oh at the end of their the, at the end of their own personal journey they will want to leave you so do we help them or sh should we help them if they are gonna like the, 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 this this kind of um, this is, and this is what we really want to introduce uh, into our games it's it's really easy to do simple moral choices in games like uh, kill kill the innocent guy or save the innocent guy like this is not <laughs> this is not really a moral choice right. But a lot of games do that kind of thing, and uh, in our games, it's it's always like save the innocent or gain these resources that you need to win the game, uh, and 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 so it becomes a, a question of morality versus um, pragmatism, which is I think much more uh, much more involved, much more interesting for for players. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I'll also add that there's always a resource which works uh, against you all the time, but it has this one thing where it works wonders with a specific year or something, because it's in all cycles, basically. <laughs> yeah, and we, we will be leaning even more into that, in that um, there, w there will be factions, uh, both in, in Cycle 4 and Cycle 5, and uh, since the fact well, diplomacy factions, um, that are, in a sense, it's much better to be allied with these guys than with the others, but they may be worse people. And so, like, what, what do you choose? Like, do, do, you, do you ally yourself with, with the people who run this kingdom and you'll have a better, uh, an easier time getting around it? Or do you align with the people who are actually right, for example? But are like like every faction, of course, has has uh, a downside too. Like we don't want to do um, like one-sided factions. Um, but there will be those 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 uh, those political questions even. Like who do you ally with? The one the one who uh, who can get you the most, or the one that you truly believe in, for example. Um, which are also fun fun questions. Uh, the voyage phase again, due to the um, it's not even a voyage; it's a journey phase in this in this um, in this game. Uh, it works a different uh, in in a different way. Uh, you don't gain mortal resources from the voyage phase. Uh, traveling is much much different, uh, much more involved in that sense. Like you you you're trying to move through different types of terrain. Um, uh, Again, it's much more difficult if you don't have a giant um, iron ship uh, to to sail in. <laughs> and yeah, like I, I could I could go on. There's there's really 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 a lot uh, a lot of things we've uh, we've added a lot on top of our um, invent comma paradigm, starting from the dice. For example, I don't know if it, this this may be buried in the in in the like vastness of our campaign, but the dice. For Heracles are different, subtly different than the dice you get with ATO. Mm. Yeah, so the pictures. Yes, yeah. it, it shows because it's different uh, add-ons if you want extra dice. Yeah, I, I did yeah. ask <laughs> if I made it because again, uh, you, you could you could think if, if we didn't like put it front and center, you could uh, think that oh, this is just different packaging or something like that. But no, these are uh, these are uh, different dice. Um, we got new, like we call them, reaction actions, which are things that, like, um, one of the fun abilities that monsters have in an ATO is that they can go in your turn. Like, you, you just, there's this fist for a fist uh, trait for uh, Hackathon, for example. Yeah. That that triggers during the player's um, round, and you need to take account uh, of it because because otherwise, if if the Hackathon goes twice. Uh, in a row against one Titan, then it's 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 very it's a very good chance that the Titan will be dead. Uh, so yeah, so we we really like that. We really like that uh, that kind of sequence breaking, and we 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 move forward with in in the expansion box with both the Haka and with uh, Titan X, 
both of those are really, really special fights. Like there's there's uh, there's no primordial round in the Titan X fight, for example, at all, uh, because those are all five Titans, right? Um, and yeah, and then we wanted to do something even more fun in in, in Sins of Heracles. So we added those actions on to uh, the primordial elements, like the, their sheet, their AI, the, their BP, that gives players the chance to interrupt the primordial turn uh, and do something in that. Mm. So, for example, the Lion Eater has the chase, uh, the chase uh, ability that allows you to follow the uh, Lion Eater at a certain interval. And... Oh, I'll have a question for that later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah so th again there's there's a lot of a lot of lot of stuff like, like eh. <laughs> or, uh yeah like again we, we can have, I can do it all day so yeah, yeah that, that, that shows I, we can hear how much you enjoy uh, doing that and how much you enjoy talking about that yeah. <laughs> yeah you are always full of passion and actually I exploit that I like to listen to this stuff, so yeah, that's great. Um, uh, since we are there and we basically scrambled all questions orders because uh, actually we answered a lot and we have new questions and stuff. I, I have one question uh, I would really like to get answered. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, in a, in Odyssey, you had uh, cycles and cycles uh, uh, all followed uh, some kind of common structure, but basically uh, you ended up having a specific uh, couple of mechanics which were specific to that cycle and basically uh, uh, influenced all your choices and decisions, uh, both uh, from the story, uh, I won't spoil a lot, I'll just say humanity or stuff like that, and from uh, a real, uh, uh, actually, development uh, uh, viewpoint, like the spare mechanics or combos or uh, time anchors and stuff like that. So, uh, I, I assume that uh, we will have something uh, similar in uh, regions of 12 scenes of Heracles, mm -hmm. but uh, we won't have ascending stuff probably, and we won't, uh, uh, we won't probably carry over a lot of properties from one region to another. In a way, you already kind of answered this question earlier because you said that in another region you may craft something which will help you in another region, but could you elaborate a bit more about this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. So, so uh, in in Close Sins of Hercules, it's actually like a two-level structure in that a region is based on on something, and the primordials there, and the equipment there, and the mechanics there are are tied to that thing. But there's also like a second layer that unifies a season. So a season also has its team, and all those three, um, all those three. Um, regions also cooperate with each other. For, for example, with, with Summer, um, one of the regions is uh, Terra, which is just off, off Crete, and you've got uh, Sacrophagus, which moves um, like walked on water. Uh, and we've shown the Halbridge Titan standing on a trireme. So you, you, that, that's also a hint of, of the sea mechanics that we'll have. You'll, you'll battle the uh, the monster um, on an, on on the open seas, so you need need to somehow stay uh, competitive. So you you're using almost like like using the triumphs as surfboards, um, and that triumph has uh, that that titan also has uh, like two giant sails uh, attached to his back to allow him to to steer the uh, the the trium, uh, to to catch the wind and, and and try to move. But we also like in but in in, in Stymphalia, you get it's it's which is really like wind based, air based. Uh, you'll get some technologies that uh, interact with something like kites, like flying, like um, um, wing gliding, um, and this will also help you in those sea battles. Um, so we we yeah we read the, the the so 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 the monsters are not like it's not a it's not. We did not sit, sit and uh, just uh, pull pull the names of the primordials out of a bag and say, okay, this season will have this, this, and this. 
he tried to really like find certain teams that worked for us, um, that worked between those uh, between those primordials, um, with the season, with the stories. Like this is this is actually the hardest part of development of 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 uh, Eon Trespass. It's it's that first it's that first moment when you need to have everything be connected. Once once you get that, once you know like oh this is this is about this, uh, all really fits together, it already falls, falls in place, and it's it's really like, it's again, it's really simple to come up with ideas and solutions, et cetera, et cetera, because it all makes sense at the base of it. Like we, the, the, I don't know if, if I make sense now, but um, it's, it's it's always fun fun to do, to do that. Like we, with, with, um, with, for example, the first cycle with uh, Truth of the Labyrinth, like once you know uh, what the theme of the story is, it was also a no-brainer to 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 know how what what the mechanics for the battles should be and that they should interact. Uh, does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah. That, that, that's actually this is probably a good time to make a big shout out to all the playtest team because they did a great job in making every the game uh, ATO at least completely playable at every time you are in i don't know if my if my run was the same for everyone else but uh, it was beautiful to see that every fight even the most surprised one uh, at any given moment both look at the uh, complex but always winnable I think the, the, in all the uh, in all the ATO, except at the start of boss fights or final fights, I I think uh, uh, everything was winnable. Maybe except the second the second fight with the upper time oracle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, the the thing with hyper time oracle is that uh, we all, we like we wanted because. Uh, and it's something that also could happen to some players with with uh, the Hermes and Pursuer or Temenos. Uh, is that uh, we we some of the fights are skewered against you, uh, or or the first battle with the Nietzschean, for example, that pe people who uh, people who don't go into the Nestis theater uh, between the cycles uh, might have a much rougher time with that battle. Um, but it's, but it's of course for like for or for story and immersion reasons. Like you want to set up the stakes. Um, so so some of those special battles are skewered against you, for example. Um, but yeah, but this is something like uh, the first thing was to 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 do like self try to create the the rules for self balancing mechanics. Uh, so, so that was really hard to get the inverted combat paradigm right. Like it's, it's this is uh, like creating the fundamentals, uh, the, the fundamentals of, of of the system was the hardest. Like the hardest part once we like once we we knew how to balance the things between all those three Transkillion stats, between the escalation, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. That was also that was the hard part, and and we and we had the basics of that before the campaign of of ATO. So, so because, and uh, sorry, I'm skipping between between topics, but um, yeah, no, yeah no, we, there's a lot to to talk about. It's it's yeah, a but, massive game, so don't feel uh, so, so yeah. anxious about that. We, we... Yeah. Uh, also, if, if if I may, we also had uh, I think through Kara um, got let's say a few questions from our community. And I think that this one uh, was was interesting because we somehow answered a bit of it already, which was the difference between playing the Heracleides against the Argonauts. So you mentioned the, uh, let's say, personal personal uh, stories due to the Heracleides having really being a full fully fleshed uh, character and less bits, if I may, than Argonauts. Yeah. Uh, but are there is there anything else uh, doing that um, differentiation between them, or is it most of the difference? No, so there's also they, they also have innate abilities, which which also leans into that. But there's one other crucial aspect: it's that um, in ATO you are piloting the Titans. You go into a buff, let's say, and you are piloting a Titan, and uh, and you are far away safely. Uh, tucked in the in your in your iron ship, 
in her in since of Heracles, uh, your your character transforms into the Titan, uh, and that's why each character has a starting class of Titan, which they can transform into. Um, but the thing is that to gain more uh, in ATO, you just created the new Argo bread Titans. Here, it's 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 much more gruesome in that you have to eat the primordial core of of the prim of of a given primordial um, to gain a certain Titan form. And this is actually this this actually is a big change for many reasons. One is that the Titans are not interchangeable between characters. So once you oh. eat a, a core, then that Titan form is yours and yours alone. You can't return it. Uh, but it also means that you can eat more cores and you have more... Uh, so, so your character gains like a roster of Titan forms that they can, uh, that they can uh, use. Um, so it's, re it's, it's really a new dynamic in the team. Like you, you, you're starting to divide the Titans between players and you can like... It, sometimes you have to decide who, who gets the, this core. Like, oh, this guy already has uh, three... Three thousand forms, so maybe someone else uh, should should get that. Um, but but maybe this 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 person already has uh, abilities that would complement this this uh, titan very well. So that's that's like one uh, that's one um, side of it. Um, another side of it is that uh, you cannot call like there's a, there's a certain limit to to your uh, to your uh, the number of your transformations. Um, where you where you start slowly going insane from the amount of things you can change into, and oh. yeah, and finally, and this is this is an exciting uh, addition, but uh, it's it's also rare in that uh, it, 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 it's like an awakening sort of thing. But um, in uh, in twelve hundred Hercules, uh, we want you to be able to, in certain situations, transform from a Titan form to a Titan form mid battle. Wow. Oof. Oh. But it's yeah. completely new strategies during the during the game. Um, okay, so yeah, you, you might want, let's say, for example, to, to pile up on, uh, to have one player with an aggressive form and a defensive form. So they start aggressive and then get defensive depending on how the fight is going. Or otherwise. Yes. Yes. Of, yes. Yeah, that's 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 great. It's we we are in in the middle of testing it because this is it's very tricky to to get it right. Like it cannot be automatic because um, that's a uh, like obvious obvious uh, powerful thing. So there are draw, uh -huh. drawbacks to that, but it's something that that you can consider as part of your strategy, um, which is fun. Uh, there are new awakenings um, in the game. That's people ask us why. Why do we call them Godform Awakenings and not just one or the other? And that's because we already had in mind that we'll be doing a different kinds of awakenings. And in in um, Heracles, two of those, um, you'll have the Eidolons, which we've already shown. But there are also basic ones, which we call Hedos Mode, uh, which is which is also something really really cool. And I hope we can we can unlock these. Um, yeah, yeah, that's, <laughs> I'm not gonna go further. <laughs> if you don't unlock them, then then everyone will be, will be sad. But um, it's it's something that we it's 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 like an inverse of 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 the awakening uh, mechanics. So it's it's also really fun, uh, fun thing to do. Oh, okay, since we are in questions from the community then one posted by fan from a day uh, uh, it is just technical so it is basically a yes or no but uh, uh, the stuff from a the add-ons to the this kickstarter from uh, for ito for instance nix are going to be the same nix uh, they got from uh, ato they will be upgraded they'll be different well, some, yeah. something else. Everything that's the same will like everything will be, will be the same. So Nix is also uh, the same. If we change anything in the game components uh, for for Nix, for example, like we we go uh, into development and and a year from now we think oh we need to tweak it or we need to add the card for it. 
uh, that card will be de de delivered for free to everyone who who, who has it. So, um, so we want to like we, we don't want to force one to buy the same content uh, twice. So nobody should should really okay. yeah. Really... Uh, that, that, that's great. Uh, yeah. If if I may also have add this, uh, I have a campaigning something. Uh, my time. Campaigning, yeah. Huh? Uh, from my from my husband. My husband is asking for a few, let's say, quick reference sheets. Like if there could be on the website uh, in the download files where you can download the Argo sheets and uh, stuff like that. A uh, two two things. Uh, first one would be a technology tree because we are still uh, in cycle one. We haven't finished uh, everything, but we did cheat somehow, not intentionally, but uh, we did. Um, mess up a bit some technology requirements either in delaying us and or having them too early uh, and he he thinks that having a, a tree uh, somewhere would be helpful and the only tree I can find it was the nasty tree which is not <laughs> the same thing uh, and another sheet yeah with quick reference of turn because uh, else it's it's on different pages on the book and just uh, putting them together together on one sheet uh, would be very helpful like you, you print it and you have all the different other things yeah so so um so that was a question we because we of course have internally have those trees we need to reference them to to make everything fit and this is also like a really uh, hard part of developing a cycle of, of ato uh where you need to sit down and like break down the campaign into technologies and think of what will be needed where etc etc um so um yes we, we we thought about including them even pre previously but the thing is that we also wanted to retain that uh, sense of discovery for the players if, and if you put a whole three in the in the rules that would be gone um but we do recognize the the need for something like this or, or the needs uh, at least like that it would be helpful to players and we have an idea how we can like do both, that how we can do uh, both a tech tree, but also keep it uh, like uh, keep keep the secrecy uh, of of what you are uh, developing alive. Um, and it may end up in the binder because it's it's a, it's a much more involved, and that, that's why I don't want to talk about it because it's a very uh, it's a very like revolution, uh, revolutionary, maybe a big word, but it's it's a very innovative innovative way of tackling uh, the subject. And I need to get the prototype of that to to see if it's if it makes sense, if it's viable. And so I'm waiting for that. And um, if or when I get it, uh, I'll be able to evaluate it. And and if it if it's possible to do the way I wanted to do, then it will be incorporated into the binder. It does seem like a good uh, option. It, turning it less into binder and more into player companion. Uh, yeah. So the, the the thing is like we can uh, we can of course put. I know that a lot of players have already done tech trees and and posted them as uh, as things on um, on BGG, for example, for download. So we can we, we could of course do these kinds of things uh, officially and, and, and put them in our resources, mark them as spoilers, and um, and, and, and and just host that. Um, we wouldn't want to add new um, new those kinds of reference um, sheets to the core game box because of course that would also mean that we are changing the the, the structure of the of what we have in the in the game box. And yeah. This could delay the, the production of the of the second print, and we'd really like it to be uh, to be quick, so people can don't wait for it as long as they waited for for uh, for the core game. Uh, that's also why we are again I mentioned before, but uh, it, it, it's uh, I think it's uh, it's it's good to remind that that's why we are putting any ATO stretch goals into the expansion box. Uh, because that's that's still in in in, in uh, um, um, like uh, um, it's it's not the 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 final production is not closed on that, uh, so it's much easier uh, it's much easier to to add stuff. Uh, okay. Yeah. S speaking of the expansion box, I had a small logistical question that um, uh, might be relevant for some of the listener. 
Um, do you foresee to have a pledge manager for those that want to add the um, a cycle four and five expansion uh, added to their pledge, let's say in six months to, to yeah, yeah, close yeah. it to release? Wonderful. Absolutely. Like anyone can, uh, if you go into the PM, you'll be able to order the expansion, even just the expansion if you want. Absolutely. Wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. F fun question from me, uh, but you uh, since you mentioned you mentioned chase mechanics, uh, I have to ask about Mothlane gear. Do you do you have in mind Mothlane gear? It's it's it works it works in 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 the same way. Exactly. Now I have the question: uh, the primordial picks the target, the primordial uh, moves, and I have a reaction there. The primordial has not yet moved, but I know where it will move. Is that the time to use the mothlame, or I have to use it later? So, well, you have to use it later because, well, it happens which it it depends on which uh, it depends on it's it's, my, it's a much <laughs> it depends on uh, what the move command was and where the reaction window, the window of opportunity, was was um, located yeah for instance uh, i'll take the simple uh, case which was the first time i used it uh, there's the burden pursuing the farthest target the the the, the okay uh, it's not really spoiling okay that's one primordial which chose something someone far to the right which picked the, someone far to the right so he will move uh, far to the right, directly in a straight line. Uh, there's someone to the left of this uh, primordial, and then the primordial gets move and attack, and in that move and attack, there's a window of opportunity. In that precise moment, uh, which is before the primordial moves, but I already know the route in which he will move, Will I be able to use Mothlame or I have to wait if the AI has another window of opportunity after it attacked? You can use it uh, exactly because th this is the same. This is the same spot where you would use, for example, a reflex. Uh, exactly. Yes. To, to evade that uh, that movement. So yes. Can... Okay. Okay. Yeah. Th this was uh, hotly debated on BGG, and we asked it on the on the Discord. But this was a bit debated uh, even among playtesters, or not exactly clear. So I wanted uh, <laughs> a word from the author. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah, great. That's, that's the that's the intention. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Played correctly then. Wonderful. Oh. I. <laughs> Yeah. I think that we're slowly reaching to, to the end. Uh, does anybody else uh, has any more questions? Yeah. Yes, I do have one ah. yeah. say, question and comment. Um, with, with my husband, we are slowly making our way so through cycle one, as I said earlier. And we are getting at a point where, uh, let, let's say that we think we might not uh, end before the, uh, let's say, doom uh, is upon us and the last turn happens. Uh, is it bad cheating to continue playing and just like not getting more materials? Big cheating or small cheating? Well, <laughs> it's the case with with uh, with games. So um, it's a co-op game. So I would say that you should play the way that makes you like to have fun, right? Um, so I think fun is 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 uh, the most important thing in a board game. I personally, like with with a heavy heart, I'd, I'd probably start the campaign again. Um, but <laughs> that's just me, and I don't like. I don't consider that like cool. If uh, you are not cheating anyone in a cooperative board game, like if if you are all having fun, then then the the purpose of the game has been fulfilled. Um, so yeah, we, we did introduce a lot of um, mechanics to, to help players uh, with that. For example, the um, tears are something that mm. that is a way of of, of um, mitigating um, some bad stuff that happens that you don't need don't have to cheat. You just need to like stack those tears and and, and, and you're good. It, it it was much harder to do something like that for uh, for a campaign game for the whole 
journey phase because of course it's all all that doom accrues over time. It's not like you can like backtrack to three spaces before and everything will be fine. Um, so yeah, so I, I think that's a, that's a tough question. That sense that if if you were, uh, I would say that the closer you are to to like the final final of the uh, of the campaign, the the more that there is the temptation to just keep on going. Um, be, while if you are in the middle of a campaign, it, I, I would probably suggest starting over because um, I, I I feel that um, some cheating, like some fudging of the of the rules of any game, is fine. But once you start uh, once you start cheating like heavily, the game loses all meaning. I remember there was a um, shut up and sit down uh, review of Etherfield, um, and I. I I I, la I I really like shut up and sit down, but I don't think that review was a like, was a good piece of of, of journalism. Uh, in that they mentioned that they started to cheat in the game, and then they felt like the game was not doing what it was supposed to do, and they were not feeling it. But from what they were describing, they were cheating so heavily that it like the original game really lost all meaning because of that. Um, right, because if if you if you start cheating on like regularly on something like this, then maybe you you, you don't roll for this attack and or, or you treat this as a crit or you you want this or you get this and at, at some point it's it's like um, getting god mode in a video game. Yeah, uh, it, it's fun. It's fun for five minutes and then the game becomes pointless because like. Yeah. There's no challenge, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, at least even if you enjoy the experience, you can't really then say, well, the game is good or bad because that's, you know, that's going not going to be the experience for everyone. Yeah, if you yeah. Start, yeah. Yeah, but it's always, there, there's, a, there, there, there's always a risk that if you, like, start, like, you, you house rule something, for example, in a game, because house ruling is a bit of a cheating, like... <laughs> it's it's you, you you like something or you you think that there's something missing so you are adding something or subtracting something um and you make it more legitimate because you are calling it home ruling or house ruling but it's in, in a way it's going against the original intent of the rules and and then you don't like and then you will have a different experience from everyone else and um this, this is something that i i feel sometimes happens in in um in in, in board game talk like you, you get a lot of uh, discussions around um gloomhaven for example uh which is a fine fine game but there's i, I there's one uh, mechanic that's stated in the rules of the original gloomhaven well there's a few but there's one that everyone i know does not play with because playing with it actually makes the game not that good and it's Discussing what you're about to do between. <laughs> ah, yeah. I, I played it solo, so I cannot really comment on that. <laughs> <laughs> you're you are already breaking it because you know what you're gonna do. But I, uh, for solo gamers, uh, you have to add one level of difficulty. So no. <laughs> no, but I mean, like, um, it's. <laughs> what, what, <but> you... <laughs> what do I mean? Like, if, if um, in that game you which is based on like um, optimization of of, of, uh, of movement you are supposed not to know what other players are doing yeah and, yeah 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 of course it goes, the, the, the... it goes a bit against the spirit of the game and so I that's why I think most players omit this rule um, yeah some, some some rules are not fun and it's still a game it's still meant to yeah. be fun yeah, but but the thing is that you can get an, a review where someone says, "Oh, Gloomhaven is is shitty because the gameplay is random," for example, or, or the I don't know what. Yeah. To do. And and if if people if, if some people are omitting a rule and others are sticking to it and not telling what they're doing, they can be speaking about two different things, and they they will not really understand each other, right? Because uh, because there's there's the, there's this there's this. Um, we we are we are to suppose that everyone is playing by the same rule. Yeah. But once you start to omit something, you may have a drastically different experience and don't even know it. So yeah. 
Yeah, in all cases, uh, this, this is going to be my final uh, word, except bye-bye later. Uh, Aeon Trespass Odyssey is uh, my personal uh, favorite game, uh, whether harsh rules or, or, or not. Uh, but I, I really love uh, yeah, this combination of sometimes you have turns uh, where you do three, four turns in a row where you just explore, and then you have one turn with three, sometimes three fights. Um, and I, I really enjoy this pathing rhythm, uh, if I may say, and I really hope that it continues uh, in uh, Sins of Heracles, since I went Fates, and um, yes, um, yeah, you, you've won my gaming heart, <laughs> so all the best. It's really nice to hear that. that uh, I also like, because I, 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 my experiences with campaign games was that they really quickly became uh become become uh, formulaic in that sense that you are uh um that you are you 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 arrive at the pattern and then it's always always like the same thing and so we wanted to do it more flexibly like again what that's what you what you basically said like there are four turns of like one session maybe all about the story once a battle once two battles there's like so it, it all everything is really varied and you you don't anticipate you cannot anticipate what's going to happen um what new rules will enter the game how the, the things will change um and i think all of it creates this ever-evolving game that that's like this is something that again that that players are saying us this this was our intent to make a game that um it's always interesting like yeah like you always want to know what's next because uh, you, you can't predict what's going to happen um, because there's there's so many moving parts, um, yeah, it's yeah that's understandable. Well, I have one last question since we we basically it's it's a bit of a tradition. Hmm? What's your favorite primordial for scenes of Heracles? For scenes of Heracles, it's an unreleased yeah. one yet. <laughs> <laughs> so I I, I it, it's difficult to choose because well there, there's there's a lot of them and. They're quite new to us in that sense that uh, we've not been living with them for five years, uh, at least mechanically speaking. Uh, I really, I really love Orzos, uh, the the two-headed dra uh, dragon, the two-headed uh, okay, <laughs> two-headed um, wolf or hound. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I really love the Hesperides dragon. That's what I wanted to say, which is not yet, um, not yet revealed. Not yet teased. Okay. Uh... <laughs> Let's hope that we won't make a mess with timing because this episode is going a bit in the future, so everything will be revealed. No, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, a name, a name may mean anything at this point. You can know, you can, you can, you can uh, learn what type, which of the labors it's tied to. But yeah, yeah. And, thank you. And, and I do really, really love the stables because they are like. It's, it's taking a concept that's not easily translatable to a monster and making something really thematic and, and, and fun with it. Um, and I do really love, I, I do ra love subverting the myths, subverting the stories. And, and yeah, so I think those three are, are, are my, my favorites. Yeah, for, for, I have this idea that when a designer won't stop talking about something, it means that thing will be designed real good. <laughs> yeah, like I, I also know that I, uh, I'm enthusiastic about what we're doing, so I can go and on and on and on and on. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and you do sometimes need to stop to leave something for for the next chat or or for an update or for whatever. Um, although we do have so much content that that I could again spoil a lot, and there would be still most of it would be unspoiled. So. Hopefully, yeah. we we get listeners from spoilers, so that's okay. So that I think we've we've talked a lot uh, about a lot of things that were not discussed before. So I think you're gonna have a, a great material for that. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so I guess we are done, Alexis. Wonderful. Yep. Uh, thank you so much, Malsin, for answering all of our questions and going into detail about uh, the new Kickstarter. I'm really looking forward to all of the new things that you're going to reveal uh, in the upcoming weeks. 
Um, by the time this episode come out, there will still be, uh, I think, 10 or 15 days for the to the campaign. So I very much encourage our listener to go have a look at the Kickstarter for Aeon Trespass uh, Odyssey second printing. Um, until next time, then, we have been The Last Anti. Uh, it's going to be a goodbye from Alessio. Goodbye. From Audrey. Bye-bye. Uh, and from Marcin. Bye, guys. Thank you again. Uh, Sorry, go for it. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you can say goodbye again, Marcel. No, you, you have to say and uh, and remember the second distance no, for I... Eidolon or something. Yeah, you have. No, to no, I, I was I was going to say that, but I, I wanted to let uh, Marcin finish what uh, what he was going to say. Yeah. But it's so... a goodbye from Marcin. Yeah. Goodbye, guys. Um, but remember that the second E in, st in standee stands for Ekaton. <laughs>